have to touch on maturity. And this seems to be something that um, you would think that don't need to be talked about, but it does. You know, a guy I talked to today, he said, you can tell a sign of uh, the certain signs of maturity. And I was like, you know, what you mean? And he, he proceeded to tell me some things are clear signs of maturity that you see in people over time that you notice as you get older. And he was like, taking your lunch to work is a sign of maturity. I'm like, what? Say, so, yeah, it's a sign of maturity. And I give you all time to comment. And I'm thinking, isn't that just a preference? He told me, no, it's not just a preference. You know, a preference is the color in your car. A preference is you like Coke over Pepsi. That, that's not what we're talking about. You know, a sign of maturity is taking your lunch. It's one of the signs is taking your lunch to work. He said another sign of maturity is having a beater. I'm like, what? <laughs> having a beater car? So I'm like, so it's a sign of maturity because you got a raggedy car. He's like, no, nah, that's not what I'm saying. Having a beater, you can have a nice car, but just having one is a sign of maturity. And he broke it down he said, basically, if you bring your lunch, you bring your lunch to work, on average, you're saving $15 a day. Let's say you work five days a week. I said, okay. Five days a week. That's 50 off the 10, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 50, 60, 70. Uh, 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 you, you saving anywhere between 85, 80 bucks. We'll call it 80 bucks to round it off. If you make your own coffee, if you make your own coffee, you're saving, you're saving about, we'll call it $5 a day. You're saving $5 a day. That's $25 on top of the 80. 90. So we'll call it a hundred. Round it off. We'll call it a hundred a week. I'm like, okay, that's nice. All right, hundred dollars. You can get these extra hundred dollars. I finish. A hundred a week equates to what a year? Fifty two hundred dollars. That's five thousand dollars. Your entire working career, what does it equate to? Now, I ain't did that, man. Y'all put it in the comment. So, an average person, you know, they work in the sixty-five, ain't they? So we'll call it. You say from eighteen to sixty-five. We'll call it twenty. We'll call it 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 40 years of working. So 5,200 times 40. What number is that? I shouldn't do this one. Well, I'm not, I'm not moving, so I should be okay. 200 times 40. That's $208,000. Jeez Louise. Man. That's a that that's the, I I'm gonna be real. 75% of people don't got that in their retirement right now. 208000 dollars Any old person that 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 work a job down the county can can do that. Alright, that makes sense. Beater. Or say you have no car note. Average car note these days is five to five hundred dollars a month. 
We'll call it $500 a month, because most of y'all join is over six. $500 a month. Five hundred bucks a month. Five hundred times twelve is six thousand dollars times forty is two hundred and forty thousand dollars plus two hundred and eight. That's four hundred and forty eight thousand dollars between that beater and bringing your lunch from home and bringing your coffee from home. That's crazy. I said, that's real. That, I mean, that's, that's real, bro. What can you say? $448,000. These are rough numbers, man. Go, drop it to 300 if you want. I don't know. One is sleek. Like, what do you want me to do? Like, it is what it is. Right? $448,000 and just the fancy car or the car note between the car note and the beater between Chipotle and bringing your sandwich to work. That, but see, the thing is, when you in your 20s, you don't think that far ahead. You don't think that far ahead, man. You don't think that far ahead. If you really, really, really thought, if you really thought far ahead, you know what I'm saying? Like, what can you say? What can you say to that amount of money? And you talking about someone who already got a pension, they got that in liquid, buddy. Just liquid. Or put it in the right accounts and all that. Well, you invest it. I don't know. I'm not a not a financial specialist. You know, I don't know where you should put it at and all that. Don't come to me for that. But I'm telling you, you could you have enough money to go find somewhere to put it. I caveat on that. To modesty. Four hundred forty eight thousand. We'll call it just four hundred, because I could be off by forty grand. $400,000 you pay yourself in just being modest. And just being modest. You pay yourself close to half a million dollars. There is a price to being flamboyant. There's a price to being undisciplined, right? And there's a pay, there's a credit, if you will, to being modest and disciplined. These are the talks that me and my son have. Especially when it's gonna be time to go into adulthood and all that type of stuff. These are the talks we're gonna have. That's why the dudes you see on your block with that regular old Corolla with the Mitch matching dough, but he come home in the coveralls or you the way, and he got a good job, he's killing it, dude. He does not get the love from his peers for killing it. He doesn't get the love from females for killing it. He doesn't, and female can be in the same situation. They don't get no love, they get no love for it. Girls can take this and twist this into getting your nails done every two weeks. How much does that cost? Hair done every two weeks. Right? It adds up, dude. It adds up. To me, flamboyancy is a sign of two things. Either immaturity or just... Or, or just a, either it's, it's immaturity or, or no... What's the word? Immaturity or no, you know, I don't want to say class. I don't want to say integrity. Or just terrible character. Or a mixture of both. Immaturity or, uh, or terrible character. Or a mixture of both. I 
That's what I want to share with y'all. That's what I want to share with y'all. Share that to somebody who need to hear it. Look at this dude beside me. What do you drive? What would he drive? Right? It's a beater, ain't it? I know y'all can see it. Y'all trying to clock where I be at. Look at that. That's a beater. And to the average society, he's losing. Oh, that yeah, raggedy old truck. You don't know what that man got going on. He got a union job. He could be a diesel mechanic down there at the dump place. He can be a diesel mechanic down there at the, uh, the state somewhere. At VDOT, uh, whatever dot you state you from. He a diesel mechanic down there. He could be a diesel mechanic at the fire department. You never know it. You never know it, bro. Old truck. It's a sign of maturity. Now, a person can say, that was a sign they ain't got the credit. That is not a sign of that, bro. Everybody don't get stuff because they can. Why is my channel getting to this point? My channel was getting to this point because I believe that we focus on how to get into a position and nothing else. That is the problem with this sector of YouTube to me. We focus on how to get into a position. I mean, I'm guilty of it too. How to get into a position, how to get a certain amount of money, and we focus on nothing else. We focus on nothing else. How I get this job, where you work at. I want to work there. How I run my clock, how I get this money, how I get the lanes, how I get that contract. That's it. No one ever talks about nothing after it's done. And we just discuss how much money you make. That's it. And another, pro another problem to me is, is that we have no more respect or admiration for our grandparents and old people and old uncles. We don't have no respect and admiration for that. We think they were suckers. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. I ain't coming home dirty day. You know what I'm saying? I ain't coming home doing all. But them dudes did 40 years, took care of the family. No thank yous, bro. We don't care about that. No grandpa and daddy won't ask nobody for nothing. Now we always trying to figure, well, how you make the ends meet? Well, it's easy how they did it. That's why all of them quasi knew how to do certain things to save them money. Your granddad and uncle and all of them knew how to fix cars to save money. That wasn't a hobby. He knew how to put an alternator on to save money. You know how to go down to pick a pool to get an alternator to save money. He also came from a culture. Oh, that's an English bike right there. A field something. I forget what it's called. He also well, he also knew how to fix things around the house. They fixed their TVs and all that type of stuff. They did that to save money. That's why they they won't doing the whole whining thing. Remember the green lunch pail? The green, remember the old school, like the miners joint, the green lunch pail. There'd be a sandwich in that joint, an apple, right? One chocolate cake or chocolate ho-ho or something or hostess cake. And he had a big green thermos with a metal cup on top. That's old school. That Joe never broke. He had to worry about the fibers breaking on it, none of that. It was just a tin, doop, open it up. And sometimes they'll fill that thermos with coffee. Sometimes if it's real cold, they'll fill it with beef stew. Convenience wasn't a big thing back then either. Won't no McDonald's all the so the street all the time. You out in the middle of nowhere working in some coal miner's zone or some construction site or logging or something like that. They had to bring their food. And sometimes your man's he, he couldn't bring nothing. You got a big thing of stew. You go, yeah, hey, take this cup. You'll pour him some of the stew just to show it, make sure your man's was all right. These are things we don't do this no more. We don't think that's cool. That's not cool, bro. That's corny. That's corny. Because everybody wants to be, you know, rich. Everybody wants to be rich. Everybody, it's not even that everybody wants to be rich. Everybody wants to be affluent. They want, they want to, the, the heirs of it. That's what they want. The heirs, the, you know, I'm this and that. I'm this and that. But, but some of the tried and true stuff, 
It's a reason why it's tried and true. It's a reason why it's tried and true. And it's a reason why some things are a cliche. Because they work. They flat out work. And you can deny it down the counter all you want to. You talk about, oh, I don't, I don't do that. I don't do that. You just don't know no better yet. You just don't know no better yet. That's all that means. That don't mean that you're somehow better than your granddaddy was. That don't mean how you somehow superior than your uncle was. It don't mean you somehow superior than your father was. It means you haven't matured yet. You have matured. And you looking at your daddy like, oh, pa, why you bring that sandwich? Now why don't you go to Chipotle or something like that? I, I got I to gotta hide my this, I got to hide my that. And then here go another caveat. That's also why they live longer than you. Yeah. That's why they live longer than you. Because they eat made from scratch food. And you going up there paying more to die faster. This is real stuff, bro. It's real spit. So it ain't just how to get the money. It's so much more than that. And I feel like I'm over the discussion on how to get a lease truck. I'm over that. Because it's been beat. If y'all don't know how to get it by now, y'all ain't paying attention. Y'all ain't paying attention. This goes for any facets of work. This is what Americans have lost. Americans have lost, to me, the grit it takes for us to be what we consider to be our right now. You know, make it great, make it this. How about if we made Americans have a little grit? A little grit is good. Stop being scared of work, shine away from hard work. Taking pride in it. And we also have taken all the admiration, the admiration out of hard workers. They're not coveted. They're not coveted by society. They're not coveted by their mates, our potential mates, woman or man. They're not coveted. Hardworking man with a lunch pail and the green thing, that's not coveted. You don't hear the opposite sexes, whether it's a woman or a man, you don't hear the potential mates being like, oh, I want to go have me a railroad worker. You don't hear that. You hear doctor. You hear doctor, lawyer, business, entrepreneur. You hear, that's all you hear. That's all you hear. That's all you freaking hear, yo. That's all you hear. That's all you hear. To, to somehow... The middle class, the working class, the hardworking American somehow is a second class citizen now. So it's either you're homeless or entrepreneur. That's it. Nothing in the middle. Nothing there. That's why us, at tru as, 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 us as truck drivers, we don't get no love. Because you're just a dirty, hardworking American. Ill. It's a nasty. I don't, I don't want to deal with that. I need my guy to wear a, a freaking, you know, butterfly knotted his thing and those weird brown leather shoes with the colorful socks when he crosses his leg and, you know, where, where the suit's cut like, you know, and I want him to have like his hair swooped to the side and a beard that goes up to here, but the bottom's gray, but the top is dark and one Superman street. They want all that crap. And it's like, that ain't no hardworking, man. I ain't discounting what they doing. I'm just saying that. That ain't going to be a dude that's out here that's, that actually physically is, is gritting to make the things work. To me, not hating on anyone. That's why a lease trucker can sit next to a... Uh, 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 at least for a first two year stockbroker and get looked over every time. And the first two year stockbroker don't make crap. And you'd be making a hundred plus a year. Won't matter. You have none of the prestige because the prestige has been eroded by media, by movies, by TV, by social media in the psyche of Americans. You're the loser. You make double what he makes. A first year star bro ain't making nothing. They make it, they coming in 36, 40 something thousand an hour, 40 something uh, thousand a year. And then they have to be like savants to get to a certain place. But an average stockbroker ain't making a million dollars a year. 
You over your lease truck seeing hundred something down a year and you're nothing. You're nothing. And they'll rather go over there because of the prestige or maybe what he could potentially could make. That was on my brain, man. I, maybe I'm wrong. Please tell me I'm wrong. You know, when I have a, um, I have a teacher in the classes that I go into now. I won't say his name. I have men who've done manual labor. I respect those people. I do. I just respect them. I just, I just respect them because, you know, at half the time when you skip 20 years, <coughs> they're in a better position than these fly by night thing to do to make a bunch of money real quick. You understand? Back when they started working in the 80s, they worked, it was coveted. Then when the 90s came, the dot com craze, everybody had a startup. Then it was the it thing to be taught, be a startup dude. And then years come by later, them dudes got regular jobs, bro. That startup junk bubble popped. But you know what stayed tried and true? Good old hard work and American grit. Stay tried and true. People don't just decide to go into these things, man. They're sold to you, bro. They're sold to you. I don't care what no one say. You can say I'm a conspiracy theorist all you want to. They're sold to you. Y'all remember back in 2003 when everything was about being an IT specialist? Come to DeVry. Come here to be an IT specialist. Come to be this. Remember all that stuff was going on? Being this, cyber this, computer, all this. Then next thing you know, it fill up and everybody got these degrees and can't get a job. Or you got to move to a place that has an opening? They did it with a slow drip, bro. They did it with a slow drip. It's a slow drip. And your granddaddy worked the railroad down the county 40 freaking years. He considered he had a good job. He was he was at a good job. And he a bum in today's society now. You a crap. They won't even spit on you. Get out of my face. You a sucker. Worked hard. What's wrong with you? I'm a sucker. He's a sucker for working hard and taking care of his family, paying taxes for 40, 50 years. That's what we believe now. That's what we believe, bro. That's crazy, man. Listen, man, don't do drugs. Be happy. It's just something to think on. Something to think on, man. It's something to think on. It's just something to think on. Don't do drugs. Be happy. Work hard. Try to do better. Share the video. That's what I believe. That's what I feel. It's a personal opinion. It's not to hurt anybody's feelings. Don't do drugs. Don't drink alcohol. Try to do better. Work hard at it. That's what it's about. This is Trucker Brown. Make sure you subscribe.